All right. So I want to talk to you guys and walk you through the machine squaring process. This is a foundational skill that goes into building any sort of furniture or cabinetry um, where you are using rough lumber because this material comes, it's not straight, it's not square, it's not the right dimensions, and we have to be able to use the equipment in our shop to bring it down to a specified set of dimensions. So I use this scrap piece right here to write my dimensions on. My target is to end up with a piece 10 inches long, 2 and 3 sixteenths of an inch wide, and 7 eighths of an inch thick. So the first step in our machine squaring process is to cut our material down to rough length. And rough length is our finished length plus a half an inch. We want to leave a little extra material on here so that once we've gone through all the squaring processes, we can trim both ends and make sure we've got enough material left over. So with my finished length being 10 inches, I'm going to set my stop block here at the radial arm saw to 10 and a half. And I'm going to lock that off. And then I'm going to set my material on here and I'm going to cut this to 10 and a half inches. I'm going to take my cutoff and throw it in the trash. And because I know I'm the only one in the shop, I'm going to walk away even though the blade on this machine is still running. Our second step in this process is to joint the best face. So that's going to be either this, this face here or this face here. We always joint faces before we joint edges because we want to reference off of the fence and our face to cut our edge. So step two in the machine squaring process is to joint the best face. So I'm going to set this down here, and I'm going to check, and this has a little bit of twist to it. If I flip it over, eh, this feels about the same on both sides. So I'm going to just pick the one that I like the best, and then using my push stick, I'm going to run this through. Now I've already cleaned my machine. Uh, I cleaned it before I started recording. I verify my depth of cut is 1 16th of an inch. And then I can power on, and I can make my first pass. When I finish my first pass, I'm going to just check, and I still have a little bit of diagonal twist in it this way, so I'm going to run it again. Transfer my pressure to the outfeed table and finish my cut. And that feels really good and stable. So I'm going to mark that face so, with an X so that I know. Even though on this piece it's easy to tell, that won't always be the case. My next step is to joint my best edge relative to the face that I just jointed. So I'm going to set it down, and I'm going to check this edge. That one feels pretty good. This one has a little bit of rocking end-to-end -end on it. So I'm going to go with my first edge. Remember, when I joint my edge, it's really important that I keep this face tight with the fence. So I'm going to check my fence for square. It looks good. I'm going to verify my depth of cut, 16th of an inch. And I'm going to get my push sticks ready. And I'm going to use my left push stick to hold it tight against the fence and my right push stick to really work on holding it down onto the table. And I'm going to check it. And it's going to be hard for you guys to see, but this corner isn't totally square. It's still got a little bit of the natural round from the 2 by 4 So I'm going to run it again to get rid of that. Pressure into the fence with my left hand and down onto the table with my right. Transferring some downward pressure to the outfeed. 
And now I've got a nice sharp corner here and I have no wobble. And when I set my square on, I can see that those are 90 degrees to each other. So step two, joining the best face. Step three, joining the best edge. And I'm gonna mark those. Now steps four and five of the machine scoring process are interchangeable. It doesn't matter which I do first. My personal preference is to come to the table saw and then go to the thickness planer, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna call step four, rip to width plus a sixteenth. Remember a rip cut is lengthwise with the grain. We use our rip fence to make that cut. And the reason we add a sixteenth of an inch is so that once we've sawn this edge at the table saw, we can return to the joiner and clean it up and we have a sixteenth of an inch of material to work with. The table saw does not leave a clean enough edge for you to take that piece and call it done. And so we want to return to the joiner later in the process. So checking my measurements here, my finished width is two and three sixteenths. So I'm going to rip this board to two and four sixteenths or two and a quarter inches. So I'm reading the right side of the scale because the fence is to the right of the blade. Now I'm going to raise the blade up right there. I'm going to get my push stick. So now I'm ready to make my rip cut. I've got green light on the table saw so I can turn this on and putting pressure down onto the table and into the fence, I can make this cut. Power off the saw, wait for the blade to come to a complete stop and then I can clear my scrap into the trash. And step four, rip to width, is finished. So we're here at the thickness planer for step five. Step five is to plane to parallel thickness. And it's called parallel thickness because we have a flat straight edge on the bottom. We need to make our top parallel with that and then we're bringing it down to our finished thickness. So plane to parallel thickness. My target thickness is 7 eighths of an inch. And as, for our setup on this machine, I'm going to measure all the way around and I'm going to set to my thickest measurement, which looks like 1 and 3 eighths. I'm also going to make sure that I'm more than 9 inches long. Um, because if I'm shorter than nine inches, joiner, planer can't run it through. So I'm gonna open this up to one and three eighths, and that's where we're gonna start. Machine looks a little dirty, gonna get it cleaned off. And I'm gonna run my piece through. Now I've got to go from one and three eighths to seven eighths. And so it's going to take a number of passes for me to get down there. Remember, I do not need to do anything. I don't need to power the machine off in between passes. What I do need to do is just make sure I'm turning no more than a full rotation. And I also know that to get to seven eighths of an inch, from one and three eighths is going to take about eight passes. So as I start getting closer, I'm going to start double checking my scale and I'm at a, I'm just under an inch right now. And I can also double check it with my tape measure. And this is just slightly less than an inch. This is just above seven eighths. And so now I'm not gonna go a full turn. I'm only gonna go enough 
to where my scale reads seven eighths of an inch. And I'm going to make my final pass. And now when I check my thickness, I am right exactly at seven eighths of an inch. So that is my finished width. I'm done at the thickness planer. I can head on to step six. For step six in, this, in our machine scoring process, we're back to the joiner. I've got one finished face, one finished edge, a second finished face. I'm back here at the joiner to joint my sawn edge from the table saw. So, my, so that edge is going to go down, and it doesn't matter which face goes against the fence because they are parallel with each other having been run through the thickness planer. So I'm going to set this down on here. I'm going to verify my fence. I'm going to verify my depth of cut, 16th of an inch. I've got my push sticks. I'm ready to make this cut. And one pass is all I need. I am right at two and three sixteenths of an inch in width. So now I can mark. Um, I can mark that last edge. And so now, when I look at my board, I've got X's on both faces and both edges. Step seven in my machine squaring process. We're going back to the radial arm saw to square up our ends. So back here at the radial, we need to make sure we cut both ends because, again, we're cutting relative to edges that are square now. When we did our rough cut, we nothing was square. So now that we've got square edges and faces, we need to cut both ends of our material. So step seven, I'm going to square an end. And what that means is I'm going to line this up and just shave this end off. About a blade width is all I'm going to take off. Tight against the fence, shave a blade width off. Remove my material, and now I'm going to set my stop block to my finished length, which in this example is 10 inches. And I'm going to take my sawn edge, or my sawn end, excuse me, the end I just cut off, and I'm going to flip my board and put that end against the stop block. And now I'm going to cut the other end of my board off. And what I'm left with after working through that whole process is a board that's exactly 10 inches long, 2 and 3 sixteenths wide, and 7 eighths of an inch thick. It's exactly the size of material that my plans called for. And this is what allows me to now go and go through the process of building a piece of furniture that's going to turn out a certain way because I've taken the time to get my material squared up to a specific dimension. It's really important that you guys are able to look at your plans, look at your finished dimensions for your pieces, and end at those target dimensions. If you can't do this accurately and precisely every single time, then your projects, they simply won't turn out right because your material that you're building from won't match what your plans call for.